Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am your guide, Man Bear Pig 97 and today we are back with more Day Our Survival. Now today we are going to try to continue to grind out what we were grinding out from the previous time. We are trying to get the motorcycle going. And also I need to find a bit of moss for my daily. Hey! Not too often you come across a beehive with some honey in it. I got one moss. How many moss do I need? Ten. Lovely. But that way I can get that extra 15 caps that will hopefully, hello, help to, worst case scenario, maybe buy a motorcycle. Because as of right now, <laughs> I'm fighting to try to acquire the tape needed to do just that. I've even tried to do a bit of grinding off camera, and it's just, tape is not something that's easy to come by, needless to say. It is not an easy thing to get up enough at an early stage like this, unless you plan on spending a little bit of money. If you don't want to spend money, and you don't want to take the time to do a bunch of grinding, there is a way that you can get some tape. The trouble is, I'm not sure as to which of the, because as I've showed before, if you come over here to the survivor's base and talk to them and go down and talk to the trader. Now he's offering saltpeter, TT ammo, wire, and a saucepan. You might can find at a different survivor base the trouble is, is that I don't honestly know if it was the Arzimaz or if it was down further closer to Tayum. I'm wanting to say it's Tayumin that has the survivor base that you can trade. I'm wanting to say it's sulfuric acid for insulated tape. Which, if that is the case, I don't believe I even have... Yeah, I've got eight sulfuric acid. I can make some, but it's not something that I could just pop up and get enough sulfuric acid more than likely at this early stage of the game to make up enough to trade for 50 insulated tape, which at this point I think all we need is 25. No, we need 19. And I believe that's about all we need. Roundabout. So we're going to go ahead and collect up the 10 moss real quick. So that way we got three, we just need seven. But that'll be 15 caps, and I would recommend doing this every day that you log in. Go ahead and acquire that uh, daily perk or whatever, the daily quest, if you will. Because it will definitely come in handy more often than not. so that way that mushroom don't get us. Yeah. I had a feeling he was going to hit my raven, but at the same time, as long as it saved me from getting hit, I'll settle. You did a good job, buddy. My little flying pecan. Start calling you Toucan Sam. Oh, and I'm too fatigued to pick it up, of course. Of course. camp I could have gotten and I overlooked it. <coughs> That's why you should always never do what I'm doing and just spam that next button because you would be surprised some of the things that you will actually discover. Say that. 
but there he is, uh, you can find an abandoned camp in the woods, but there's also like a little shack that you can come across in the woods, and it'll give you the option to either try to attack the guy, or instead wait for him and then try to step out and say hello. Now you would think that'd be kind of a dumb move to do in a sense because most of the people that we've come across at this point are deranged psychopaths that want to eat you in the face. So, that being said, it's quite peculiar when you can come across this guy in the woods because you can actually talk to him. You will use a bottle of vodka. So you need to try to have a bottle of vodka on you for this particular quest. When I say quest, it's really not so much of a quest as a, uh, a uh, unique interaction, if you will. Now this unique interaction, once you uh, share a bottle of vodka with him, it'll tell you that y'all are sitting and discussing the current affairs in the world today. And then as you go to finish up with him, he will actually offer a trade with you. And he is considered the rare trader, if you will. I'm not sure what that has to do with it, but yeah. He's like a super rare trader that you can meet. Which is very handy, might I say. I'm not sure exactly what all he has to offer. I can't honestly for the life of me recall. But I do know for sure that he is a trader and you can acquire some decent loot. I mean, it's nothing special. But I'm going to say that one of them might even be insulated tape now that I think about it. say that one of them may actually be it's the last tape that you can get from them. Either way it goes, it's not a pretty neat little quest. You just have to come across this little like random shack little hut in the woods and the guy will hook you up. Turn that media down just a bit because I don't want it to be drowning out my voice. Yeah, I'm getting one moss at a time. So I've still got four to go. And I know a lot of people will probably be like, oh, we don't want to see you just sitting there grinding and, and this, that, and the other. That's not something we want to see in a video. But yet, at the same time, you would be surprised how much of this game really is just that. I mean, you could probably spend a little money, you know, a few dollars here and there, to help in tight situations, so to speak, to where you could probably just beeline the majority of the game but I mean really and truly if you don't put in the time and the work on a game like this for instance to take that extra time to grind out and get what you need and do this and do that I mean really and truly in my personal opinion you didn't play the game the way the game was intended because that more effort you're putting into building up whatever the longer you put in grinding out the more you're going to, it's kind of like, it, it, the best way to describe it, and I know it's really weird using it as an analogy for a video game, but imagine the concept and the difference, if you will, between a teenager getting a brand new vehicle that mommy and daddy bought and paid for and gave it to them, there we go, versus one that you've worked Four years busting your hump to try to get. Who's going to appreciate it more? Do you think that the kid that didn't have to work a day in his life doesn't know the true value of a dollar is going to appreciate that vehicle more than the person that went and busted his butt, putting in overtime, you know, wasting his life away in a sense? Because some people look at working as just wasting your life away. And in a case, that kind of is, but in, at the same time, if that's the way that you look at it, you might not quite be an adult yet. <laughs> 
Because if you understand that concept, then you know. That's what makes the world go round. It sucks, yeah. They say mon money is the root of all evil, and technically they're true. But what they don't tell you is that even though it is the root of all evil, it's also the root of everything in this world. And you have to be prepared for that. That being said, something like this particular game, I mean, you see all of this crap that I've got. Most of it, yeah, I probably don't even need, and there's a lot of it I'm probably going to leave behind when I move on to the next location. That's fine. Because once I get down to wherever it is, Severe or Tayumin or wherever that I've got to go, at a certain point, I know for a fact I'm going to be backtracking for quests. They will have you backtracking here and backtracking there for these quests. And it's going to come in handy when you leave some of that stuff behind. It's what a lot don't realize. Well, hello. percent chance. Come on, give me like 19 or 20. Mm. Or 5. I guess 5 will work. Because that's 5 less than what I need. Right? Well, let me rephrase that. That's 5 more than what I've got to what I need. Towards what I need. It's still early. Bear with me. I apologize. Well, I just pretty well overcumbered myself there, didn't I? And I get a broken assault rifle. When do I get a good one? I've been getting nothing but broken ones for quite a while now. Can I get a good one for a change, please? Or at least a Nagant rifle. I would love a Nagant rifle. Oh, come on now. So let's escape, because there ain't no need to have to fight them if we don't have to. And then run up here to the armory, and let's see what we've got in here, everybody. Looks like I'm running low on my tools. Come on, big money, big money, big money, give me something good. I mean, technically I do need some TT ammo. I was running low, so, but I was really hoping to get something a little better than that. Not gonna lie. But at the same time, I mean, if anything else to have gotten besides a better weapon, that would probably have been the best thing to get because TT ammo is the number one ammo I'm using right now. And needless to say, I'm about out. I think I've got like maybe 20 rounds left, if that. If that. So that worked out. I'm getting an extra 30 rounds of TT ammo off of that. So never, ever overlook things like boxes and, and containers. You never know what could possibly be in them. And it is very well worth getting anything you can find because it might be the number one thing you needed. You never know. Plus, look at all these books I'm getting. There's three different recipes I just got. Those recipes are definitely going to come in handy because they're also going to give me some more XP. And we all know XP is a very handy thing to have. So I have two batteries left. So let's go ahead and replace a battery in our little flashlight. Get some more fuel in that. Let's throw back on said flashlight. I've been running around with this flashlight equipped the entire time like a dummy. But I've got several batteries, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I'm probably about to lose that hacksaw, I'm sure, and it's probably the only one I have, too. But, I mean, it is what it is. We will make do with what we've got. That takes down 25 rads. And we'll get a sip of wine that takes down 50.
Now, I'm not going to bother with the videos, even though it is... Come on now. Boars? Really? Two of them. I'm going to have to say nay. But I would recommend everybody watch the little videos. Always. I'm not for the sake of the video, because it seems like every single time I watch one of those videos on here, it puts the video for the thumbnail of my particular video. So, as you can see, it doesn't really matter. There's no specification for what location they'll spawn in. What it boils down to is you're on a, a top of a timer, so to speak. So if you come into your coin section, you'll notice up here at the top, you have the option try your luck, random rewards for viewing ads. You can hit watch. So you don't necessarily have to find those TV monitors in random locations. If you come in here to the popular, you'll notice if I was to click watch on that TV at the top, afterwards there would be a timer start counting down. And it's like every 10, 15 minutes or something like that, if I'm not mistaken, real time. It becomes available for you to try your luck again. Once it becomes available for you to try your luck, it will start randomly spawning in houses or any location for that matter. So you don't have to go searching for them. That's not something that you have to, to go find to be able to get those rewards. Those rewards are available, and all you have to personally do is just go to your uh, in-game currency store, so to speak, and do it there. You don't have to actually go and track them down in the wild, so to speak. All they're doing with that is some people don't remember to go in and click on the video to watch it. So they throw the TV up in random locations that you're searching, so that way you don't have to, you know, you have a couple options of how to, to go across watching it. Because, I mean, a lot of times you'll be out playing, doing your thing, you're out trying to grind this, that, or the other out, and you're not going to be paying attention for every minute that goes by. So you're not going to know when it comes up available, and most people don't even go in there and pay attention to it because they say, I'm not spending a dime. You know, some people are determined to say, I'll play this game, but I'm going to, you know, play it without spending any money to show that it doesn't have to be, you know, because some people do that. I tend to do that a lot on certain games, even. I'll say, I'm not going to spend a dollar on this game because this seems to be a pay-to-win game, and I'm going to prove that you don't have to pay to beat the game. I do that all the time. And this is one of those games that it's not a pay to win, but they do have options in the the in-game marketplace, so to speak, where you can, you know, buy a few things. And if you don't want to, hey, it's okay. Y'all have watched me in previous videos, I'm sure, as I've watched those uh, little ad TVs, whatever, and I've gotten 10 caps left and right. All the time, I get 10 caps. It seems actually more often than not, that's usually my reward. And when you get 10 caps every couple of minutes, it adds up. And before you know it, you're able to buy things from the store without even spending a dime. So this game is not a pay-to-win like some games are. Some games, I mean, yeah, you could grind out and it'll take you forever and a day. And you might get somewhere with it. For instance, one of the games that I do like to play a lot is World of Warship Legends. World of Warship Legends is a free-to-play game. Now, those games that you can download for free tend to be the type of games where a lot of things you're not going to be able to get without paying for. Now, as of right now, I'm actually doing a grind-out on a campaign that, I mean, me and a buddy, he he's a lot further ahead than I am. Cool Cat Al 43, definitely check his channel out. But he is a whole lot farther in his campaign than I am because I haven't been grinding it out as much because I've been doing more on like other, you know, pro video productions. But he is roughly rank 71, and I'm like rank 39. Or no, he's 79 because he's only a couple ranks away from getting it maxed out. This is the last week 
that he has on that campaign. And after he does all of his weekly Havocs, which are the in-game quests, so to speak, that give you the <coughs> whatever in-game currency that it is to level you up per level, so to speak, if you catch my meaning. Even if he does every single one, like he has been, he's still going to be roughly five levels away, and he's going to have to pay a little bit out of pocket. It ain't going to be, but probably five bucks, you know, the $4.99 minimum purchase. But even still, he's going to have to pay. Now, the reward for the end of this particular campaign is the heavy cruiser, the Siegfried. Not a bad ship. But, once you get to the end of the campaign, you are then acquiring a type of currency called Steel Shards. And those steel shards, every time you get, once you get to the campaign's level 100, and you start, you can continue to progress past level 100. And every level you complete past level 100, since it's a continuous ending quest, or campaign, so to speak, will then award you a certain, like, you know, 100 or 200 star, uh, steel shards apiece. So, unfortunately, there is a ship in the forge, is what they call it, that is the, lo the little shop, in-game shop, that you can buy whatever you want that they have to offer, ships and different, you know, promotion orders for the commanders and all this, that you can um, purchase with the steel shards. Well, the main ship they have is the iconic USS Missouri, the iconic battleship, the Missouri. They want 30,000 steel shards for it. Now, he has been completely up-to-date with his campaign and all of his weekly habits to this moment. And yet, we have a week left in the campaign, and there's no way that he's going to complete it just by doing the weekly habits. So how in the world would he possibly be able to get past that to start earning the steel shards? He's not. So he's going to have to pay some money. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Doesn't matter two ways from Sunday how he tries to do it differently. He could try it every other way he could think of, and there's no way, form, or fashion that he's going to get out of having to pay a little bit of money. It's just inevitable. Some games are like that. This game is not, however, one of those games. Because there, I mean, you can go ahead like I did, and I would recommend to everybody, they're not, this game is clearly not sponsoring me, because I have yet to get that far in my videos, so it's clearly not sponsoring me when I say this, okay? I would definitely recommend to buy the one-time premium edition of this game. Absolutely. It's like a couple bucks, I'm wanting to say it was like $2.99, it might be $5, $4.99, something like that at this point, I don't honestly recall, because I haven't bought it in a while, because it's a one-time purchase, and you do that one-time purchase, and it doesn't, I mean, the game, like I say, is free to download, but you can download the premium version of the game, that'll then give you, like, the pet raven, and the little reward caches that we have found at every safe haven we've gone to, <laughs> excuse me, So I would always recommend to anybody who gets interested in this game, and I know I am skipping through a lot of battles and stuff like that, if you can fight them in your playthrough, by all means, do it. Any chance you have to search out a location as far as a town and the little houses in the town, or any chance you get to fight an enemy if it's not too overpowered. Now, if you get into the fight and you realize there's no hope in, in Hades that you're going to be able to beat them, you see there's a lot of times I've had that happen. And I've played this game for a very long time. Since beta, as a matter of fact. Since its early access release, I've played this game. I've had many ups and many downs. I've had to contact customer service reps a couple times due to issues with the game. And I will say this, again, not being sponsored. They have been quicker to answer and fix any issues that I've had previously with this game and be quick to make things right much more accurately, sufficiently than 
any other actual console game. My lord, I'm still fighting with, oh, I don't even remember which game it is at this point. It's an old game that I don't even play anymore. My account was somehow hacked into or something. I lost it all. I don't know what exactly happened. And they basically told me that I could either A, you know, just get over it or B, start a new account. You know, like, uh, I pretty much didn't have much of a choice. But nothing I could do. And even with World of, World of Warship Legends, I still play it today. And I'm fighting between them and uh, Amazon as of right now because I bought a game like the game itself is free to download and it's free to play a lot of people consider it pay to win and that's open for debate we'll say that and if you want hey leave a, leave a note down in the comment section on what you think about it and how you feel about the way games are becoming today versus back in the day when you could buy a game for, you know, a Super Nintendo game, because I'm 31 years old. I can remember when back in the day you'd buy a Super Nintendo game for 20, 30 bucks, and that was it. It's bought, paid for, you play it, you beat it, you play it again, beat it again until you get bored with it, and go sell it or whatever. Now, Red Dead Redemption. I paid 60 bucks for that disc. And doesn't matter. You still will have to pay a... $9.99 month membership to PlayStation Plus for the sake of being able to play Red Dead Redemption because they have a contract together where you can't play one without having the other. Even though PlayStation Plus technically should have nothing whatsoever to do with Red Dead Redemption and Rockstar, they made it so that way you cannot play the online or even the offline story mode. You can't play either one unless you have the $9.99 a month membership to PlayStation Plus. It's ridiculous. This luckily, like I like about most mobile games, there are a lot of mobile games out that do stuff like that where you got to pay a monthly subscription for this or a premium for that. You don't have to with this. You don't. But like I was saying, I'm still currently fighting with uh, Amazon and Wargaming, even though I still love World of Warship Legends with a major mixed feeling kind of deal because I have my moments like a lot of these games nowadays, but I still love it for what it is because not many games out there, you can take a massive real-life warship like, you know, the, the USS Iowa for instance, and take it out to sea and drop some, you know, 16-inch rounds on a Massachusetts or something. You see what I'm saying? There's not many games out there like that. But I went online because I saw that you could get, even though I have the downloaded version, the digital copy, if you will, downloaded to my console, I happened to find out that you could buy the disc, the actual hard game copy of the disc. Online for like 20, 25 bucks, okay? Now the reason I did it was because it came with a redemption code that I could redeem for the Firepower Deluxe Edition whatever. <coughs> so this edition came with a couple of different premium ships. Now the difference between your regular ship and your premium ship is just that. The premium ship gives you extra rewards at the end of the battle. Which is extremely handy when it comes to in-game currency that you need to buy the next ship in a tier. And progress, because that's basically the whole concept of that game, is take a ship into battle get its ship XP up enough to where you can get all the mods unlocked for it to give it better range or better torps or whatever the case may be, and then get it its ship XP up enough to where you can get to the next ship, spend some in-game currency known as credits on it, and buy that ship and start the process all over again where you're leveling that ship up to get all the mods unlocked and so forth and so forth. Well, this firepower pack would have given me a couple of free ships, well, premium ships if you will, 
and also give me some booster flags that would help to get a little extra currency out of each battle that I run the flag on. They would also give me um, extra currencies and all this good stuff that is very handy to use that I could have loved to have. So I order it. I'm in the U.S. in the South. I've stated in other videos I live in a rural freaking Arkansas where there's very little around. Uh-oh. I see the mistake I just made. Let's hope I can get back to camp before it breaks. So, I order it. It's supposed to be shipped to me. Well, a couple weeks go by. I still haven't got this thing in. I'm like, what is going on? Where is my stuff? Like, what is going on? Okay. So, I go online and happen to notice that it's coming from the Royal Mail. Well, at the time, I didn't know what the heck the Royal Mail was. I was worried that it was coming from out of nation. Like a different country. Sure enough, it finally comes in. Where is it coming from? The UK. Alright. So now I have a game from the United Kingdom in Arkansas. If anyone has ever had this issue before, you will know you just got basically a worthless piece of junk. Because there are different laws than here. Digital copyright, whatever laws, it will not let you play the disc on an American console. I don't know why. Not the point. The point is, it doesn't work. So now I'm fighting to try to get a replacement with the correct one from the correct nation that I can use. Now, me living in America, I don't see how they should have ever allowed me to be ordering something from a completely different nation, uh, country that doesn't... It, it clearly is against... I mean, I wouldn't even think you could order something from out of country if you can't use it. So that's something that I'm fighting to get with now. So be mindful of everything you do with these new games that's not like it used to be and that's why when I find a game like this I stick with it for as long as I can because I can enjoy playing something no matter how many playthroughs I do that's not going to cost me an arm and a leg to try to have a bit of entertainment now I mentioned earlier about a gentleman in the woods that was a traitor a dugout shelter someone might live here you should tread carefully oh and I didn't hit search I hit next. That was my stupidity. I should have hit search. I'm so sorry. He can only be found in the forests, and that's what you want to look for was that right there. That I just totally screwed up on. I was hoping to get that on camera for you, and I so totally screwed up on it. I'm so sorry. I'll see if I might can get it another time, or something. That was my fault. I hit next not thinking when I should have hit yeah, I should have hit search. And all it would have done was that it would have taken me to his little house and given me the option to either walk in and go search in the place or wait for the gentleman to come back because turns out there's nobody there. And if you wait for the gentleman to come back, you can step out and throw your hands up. He'll draw a weapon on you, but he won't fire. You'll talk to him, and then you'll sit and talk over a fucking bottle of vodka and shoot the shit and have a good old happy-go-lucky time. And then after you're finished with that, he'll offer to trade with you. And it'll be basically like another trader. He'll trade you if you have X amount of, you know, wire. He'll give you X amount of uh, thread or something. You know, it, it's a trade. And it's a rare trader. He is very difficult to find because you can only find him searching forests. So naturally, he's not easy to come by because it's not like you can just go to that location and be like, hey, how you doing? Like me going over to this survivor base. I can just go over there, talk to the trader, be done. It's not that simple. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I kind of rambled a bit more in this one than I normally do. But I'm trying different things, see what y'all prefer more, you know trying to get myself to that 
I guess you could say to that perfect, or not, well, ain't nothing perfect, but to that specific location in this YouTubing, I guess. I can't think all of a sudden. <laughs> but I'm trying to be able to put my channel to a point where people actually enjoy it and I can actually make it grow. So I can't just sit and do the same thing constantly over and over. You know, I did more focusing on the game and less talking, so now I'm going to do a bit more talking and less focusing on the game and see how y'all like that. Change up the game soon. I mean, I did want to kind of get as far as I could in the game for the sake of the videos, but at the same time, y'all might start, you know, getting bored with this game. I'm also producing some live streams of other PS4 games that I play periodically throughout between these sessions. So, if you like what I'm doing and you would like to see more, punch that like button and hit that subscribe and turn the bell on for notifications so you never miss a new video when it comes out. Throw something down in the comment section and let me know what you'd like to see in upcoming videos, what kind of streams you'd like to see me do, what y'all'd like to hear me talk about or not. If y'all like kind of, you know, I see all kinds of different things where there's like people telling stories or, or you know, doing like dad jokes. You know, Oxhorn, for instance, has got his scotch and smoke rings where he does live streams and Q&A and all that stuff. Anything in particular y'all'd like to see me do, let me know. I would love to be able to make my channel grow to be something that you would really enjoy and something that you would actually look forward to the next video. With that being said, I hope y'all have a wonderful week, and I will see you in the next episode.